Paul on senior night for five seniors who prepared to take the floor for the final time as this 28 and 0 Illini team says goodbye to an old friend mentor and nemesis Gene Cady. The customary sell out the 12th straight here in Champaign nearly 17,000 on hand to see this 28 and 0 team try to take another step toward perfection they take on Gene Cady's final Purdue disappointing 7 and 18 coming in we welcome you Dave Barnett and Tim McCormick and there's already been all kinds of emotion here with the ceremony that you went through all seniors get a chance to uh, say their goodbyes and get their rewards and Gene Cady just got a whole slew of nice things which we'll talk about but they're not going to be very nice to him once the tip off happens here. No Dave this is a monumental challenge for Gene Cady on his farewell tour number one his best player and leading scorer Carl Landry is out with a knee injury and Illinois is 28 and 0. They've had eight days to prepare. This is senior night and they're anxious here with the Orange Nation to cut down a Big Ten championship night once this game is over with. Five seniors to start, and they are our star watch, both for the Illini. Luther Head, their leading scorer, number five in the Big Ten, and Roger Powell, who has blossomed maybe as much as any Illini this year, at 12 points and a little over five rebounds per game. They have started the same five for now all 29 games with James Augustine, Darren Williams, and Dee Brown joining the seniors. And minus Carl Landry, by far Purdue's best player, the already struggling Boilermakers go with Brandon McKnight, Andrew Ford, David Teague, Gary Ware, and Matt Kiefer. This final Purdue team comes in 3-11, and 10th in the Big Ten. That in no way represents what Gene Cady has meant for that program. He's the second winningest coach in Big Ten history. A winning record against Illinois, he has on 11 occasions left Assembly oh, Hall with a victory. Yeah, and his proudest pupil for 19 years, an assistant beginning at Western Kentucky and then many years in West Lafayette, Bruce Weber, whose team controls the tap and Darren Williams goes to work. Bruce Weber called Katie earlier this week and said, what do you want as a gift? Katie said, I want to win. And then he jokingly said, few days ago if I can just br bribe Bruce into giving me a really nice send off that would be my ultimate but I don't think that's going to happen either Purdue on uh, their last game lost Carl Landry to an ACL tear in a two point loss on Saturday to Minnesota that was Katie's home finale and tonight the home finale for the Illini who are the first 28 and 0 team in 14 years since the UNLV team back in 1991 in Bruce Weber's second season. He has lost only one home game, and that was to Gene Cady. January a year ago, 58-54. High low, Augustine trying to hit Powell and knocked out of bounds by Andrew Ford. 47 years, Gene Cady has run man-to-man -man defense. I wouldn't think he's going to change it up tonight. At 58-54 score, if Purdue has anything to say about tempo, will be something that they'll aim for tonight. A game in the 50s. If it gets to 60 or more, it's probably going to be more than they can manage. As Williams fires in his 50th three-pointer. Illinois is absolutely loaded on the perimeter. If you look at just production and record, Illinois has the best trio of guards in all of college basketball. And they force another turnover on both the Purdue trips, in fact. See the three-guard attack. They're going to set a screen to free up Darren Williams. Head, Williams, and Brown can all run the point, make a three, or take it to the basket off the dribble. And the straight-on three-pointer by Luther Head. Not fair this time, and David Teague pulls down the board. If anybody can fill Carl Landry's role, it will have to be Teague. 
with the second leading scorer and leader in assists. It's a different type player, though, you're talking about with Teague. Not nearly the inside threat that the powerful Carl Landry was at 6'7 and about 240 pounds. Yeah, and the challenge here for Gene Cady, Brandon McKnight is the only playmaker that they have. Where on the short turnaround? He actually starts in Landry's spot. 6'9", junior out of Detroit by way of Dodge City Community College, and they leave D. Brown alone. That's a mistake even from that far out. As Brown fires in his 73rd three-pointer. Illinois in the top 10 in the country in field goal percentage and three-point field goal percentage. Kiefer with the offensive board and the left-handed follow. Yeah, tremendous start by Purdue. It's a slow-paced game. I know Illinois is making shots, but they're not running up and down the court dunking it. This is what Gene Cady was looking for. Slower the better as far as the Boilers and their plans. Powell screening for head. Guarded tightly by McKnight. And now Darren Williams. Sets up another three for Brown, and he's two for two. Hey, if D. Brown is making his three, he's totally an NBA prospect. You know he's going to score in transition, Dave. McKnight. Williams ahead. The one-man pass break. One on two. And Kiefer rebounding the miss, but there's contact. Growing up in Chicago, D. Brown practiced at Gallwood Park. He said the rim was horrible. You could barely make it from the perimeter, so he spent all of his time driving to the hoop. He said this summer he spent all of his time working in the gym on mechanics. It's the first time he's ever done it, and his offensive production beyond the three has absolutely exploded. He said before the season, if this year went the way he hoped it would, he would definitely consider passing up his senior night and going into the NBA as a junior eligible. Yeah, that would be a big mistake. You think? Absolutely. You know, the thing about D. Brown is that he is not a pure point guard. He's not an Allen Iverson. But if he comes back and has a monster senior year, all of a sudden, NBA scouts look at him different. I talked to a scout this week. He said right now he's looked at as a mid to late second round pick. If he comes back, all of a sudden, maybe he's that spark off the bench that a team's looking for. And he'll get some good advice. If he's going to be anywhere outside of the early to mid first round, he'd be crazy to leave. But it's something he said he was honest early on he would consider. And he fires it inside for James Augustine who is fouled and will shoot free throws when we come back the Illini off to a 9 to 4 start. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Bex Beard, who reminds you that life beckons and you're holding the key. And Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Nine four. Illinois on top of Purdue early. Gene Cady, 25 years wrapping up at Purdue, 512 victories, 15 20 win seasons, six Big Ten titles, 16 trips to the NCAAs. Purdue had made three trips before he arrived. And he's been to the Elite Eight twice, and what will always nag him, I'm sure, wherever he goes the rest of uh, his life, even if he gets back into coaching are the two near misses, the most recent in 2000, where he was stopped one round shy of finally making it to uh, a final four, but the seven-time Big Ten Coach of the Year, and he is so respected, and it's good that everywhere he's gone, this farewell tour around the Big Ten, people have had a chance to show him and tell him exactly how highly they think of him. First two-point try by the Illini. Their first five shots were threes, and Augustine was fouled on the two-pointer, which he missed just before the timeout. How good must it be to be James Augustine? As a freshman, he played caddy to Brian Cook. Cook made life easy. Now he plays with these guards just hustling. You're going to get a lot of easy opportunities out there. Brandon McKnight. Outgoing Purdue senior. 
Kiefer should be back. He's a junior. And Augustine, one of the top shot blockers in the Big Ten, now tied up by Kiefer, and the possession arrow will keep it on this end. The dilemma for Gene Cady in this game is that to compete with Illinois, you need ball handling and strong post play. He has neither. Look at the length defensively by Augustine. Once again, McKnight is the only ball handler. They're going to try to wear him out. Another junior, Matt Carroll, checking in for Kiefer. David Teague out of Indianapolis, guided by Hood. McKnight was briefly open. Chris Hartley in the game, former walk-on, and again, Gary Ware off the glass that time. The replacement for Carl Landry with four of the first six points for the Boiler. Illinois, 14-0 and at home. And a streak here at Assembly Hall of 20 straight since the Purdue visit last January 10th. So earlier this year, ended Wisconsin's 38-game home winning streak. And if there are any doubts about Illinois coming into that game, that's the game, I think, where most people around the country figured they were for real, as Williams missed three, taken into the front court by Brandon McKnight. Offensively, you're going to see about 25 seconds of dummy offense by Purdue. They want to milk the clock and make Illinois spend time on defense. Saturday, ESPN has two great games beginning at noon Eastern. Francisco Garcia, number nine, Louisville against DePaul. The Cards with a win tonight now can clinch outright Conference USA. Nine Eastern, Oklahoma State, number eight, taking on Texas, still very much in need of a win, most think, to nail down an NCAA berth. College game day is going to be down there at Oklahoma State. McKnight spinning against Aaron Williams, and Purdue turns it over with an offensive foul. Matt Carroll on the offensive end with his first. Bruce Weber says all the things Gene Cady taught him and all the other Cady assistants about dealing with failure and life and how you can't quit. And the tough thing about this year being his last is that he's having to live with his own teachings with this 7-18 and 18 Purdue team. Yeah. Gene Cady is, is such an interesting guy. He has two personalities. Off the court, he is warm and caring, really a funny guy. Once he gets on the court, though, there's, there's some, some maniacal tendencies. His, uh, his star jump shooter, David Teague, was telling me that sometimes he thinks that Coach Katie's a little bit crazy in the huddle, but it's definitely nice to have somebody like him who's got your back at all times. Charles Davis checks in for the first time. The tight end for Joe Tiller's Boilermaker football team. It's 6'6 and almost 270 pounds. D Brown loose along the baseline. Yeah. And he's got eight. How pretty is that? Illinois leads the Big Ten in assists. Gene Cady told me that in his 25 years, it's the best trio of guards that he has ever seen. Think of how many backcourts that takes in. Some that came out of the Big Ten to win national championships. Davis unable to hang out underneath. Yeah, and Darren Williams with the delivery. The first player in Big Ten history to lead the conference in assists years one, two, and three. That's, that's a lot of great point cards as well that haven't done that. He's going to make it three straight this year before he, Magic Johnson, and Bruce Douglas, formerly of Illinois, the only in the Big Ten uh, to do it twice. And the feed for Roger Powell to slam home his first two on his senior night. Makes it the Illini by nine. Not yet seven minutes gone of the game. Also in, Xavier Price, 6'3 freshman. The only Illinois product for the Boilermakers from O'Fallon. And their shot clock down where they can start getting serious looking for a shot. And the touch by the tight end, Davis not there this time. Darren Williams the board. Ether head yet to score. And bounced off the foot of Davis. 
for a new shot clock. Notice the spacing, great delivery. Roger Powell has maximized his ability as much as anybody in the Big Ten. Known as the Reverend, last weekend, Coach Weber gave them the weekend off. He's a, an ordained minister in the Pentecostal church. So with his free time, he went back home and he gave a sermon in church. He's been finding a way to do that even without off weekend. Amazing. Williams, another three-pointer. He has two. Brown has two. And there has been an assist on every Illinois basket until now. Here comes Head. 14 to 2 run by the Illini. Timeout, Gene Cady. And you said this afternoon, the first five minutes would tell the story. Try as they may, Purdue simply can't keep their pace up for very long. Yeah. Most teams play defense to stop their opponent. I swear, Illinois looks like they're trying to score from their defense. Multiple weapons. Their balance is incredible. This is a five-man motion offense, and it's great for March. They are getting better and better. And, you know, if you're looking at their assist turnover ratio, one thing that's so impressive, a good point guard has a two-to-one assist turnover ratio. That's basically what Illinois does as a team. So whoever has to play them the postseason has the, the problem that you can't say, well, we shut this guy down, we're okay. We shut these two down because any of the five can hit you with a 20-point game. They all average double figures. And try to find that anywhere else around college basketball. Try to find the very many five senior teams. Hard to do. Gary Ware, meanwhile, is the Purdue offense. He has six of their eight. And Powell kicking it back out. Williams with his third three-pointer. The range, the judgment, the unselfishness, and it's been on display every minute of every game this year with a junior from the Colony, Texas, Darren Williams. Nick Smith into the game for the first time and hit with the third Illinois team foul. And 11-28 remaining in the half. Illinois off and running, up 15. I tried to grab you and you had a brand new tailored sport coat on and I ripped your pocket. And you, I asked you the next day if I could buy you a new one. You said I didn't have enough money to buy one. And you were right. But now I do have enough money. And and I'm not going to give you the orange one. But we do have a certificate through Delbert's uh, clothing store in town. You can go to Chicago and have not only one tailor-made suit, but two tailor-made suits from Hart, Schaffner, and Marks. Two former Gene Cady assistants there, helping uh, send their mentor away, not empty-handed. David Teague hit on the drive down the lane by Gary Ware, playing a terrific game so far. First two points for Teague, 23-10 Illinois. Bruce Weber said he couldn't, or Cady told him he couldn't afford to replace the suit he tore when he was trying to hold him back from the ref. Weber made $4,000 a year when he was hired at Purdue. He went entire winters without ever turning on the heat in his apartment. Follow won't fall for Price. And finally, it's Kiefer alone along the baseline. Yeah. Nice response by the Boilers out of the timeout. That has always been a Gene Cady trademark. They score out of breaks. They stop runs. Rich McBride, Nick Smith, all off the bench. In and out on the baseline turn by Smith and a rebound foul. Well, ESPNU is here tomorrow. ESPNU will simulcast on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern for the special two-hour college game day live from Oklahoma State. Be there from the beginning. ESPNU, 7 Eastern on ESPN2. 
Just one more outlet to follow college basketball as uh, the tournaments arrive very quickly. The frustration is on Gene Cady's face with only seven victories this year. You know, when you watch him at practice and, and watch him on the sideline, he still has the passion. The big problem, four out of the last five years, no NCAA. There's a huge talent deficit, and if you look at their roster, they don't have any McDonald's All-Americans. They only have one kid, Matt Keeper, that coming out of high school was regarded as a top 100 recruit. They just don't have the personnel to compete. The one thing that's worked in their favor this year is the fact that they already know who his replacement is going to be, and he's been on the staff this year, Matt Painter and from time to time has been able to go recruit high school players and tell them, everybody else who recruited you, your assistant, I'm going to be your head coach next year if you come to Purdue. Yeah, I, I think they stole a great coach there because he would have been at Southern Illinois who already has 24 victories, and he would have probably been the hottest coaching recruit after this season. Darren Williams tearing it up. Four for six, 11 points. David Teague. And Ware gets the tip. Gary Ware averages barely three points per game. He has had one double-figure game. That was their last game, 10 points at Minnesota. He's already got eight. Assistant coaching against him today, and another former assistant to both Katie and uh, former Southern Illinois head coach as was Bruce Weber. Matt Painter will take over next year. He followed in Weber's footsteps. Had uh, not a whole lot of time to prove that he could do it as a head coach, but there weren't any questions, as there were none following Weber's stint. As uh, Katie aide at Western Kentucky and Purdue, and then the Southern Illinois head coach who established that he was ready for a big time offer after years and years and years of knocking on doors and making phone calls and being turned away, even at lower levels. He could try at the NAIA Division II. So we're not really looking for someone who's used to a Big Ten budget. He has so many funny stories about Gene Cady. He said that it, one of his big responsibilities is when Gene Cady threw his sport coat into the stands, he would go retrieve it, and they'd look on the ground picking up a wallet and some change and his keys. And that's something that I used to love, the scowl and getting rid of that sport coat. We're near the nine-minute mark, first half. Williams doing it all. Leaps up, tips that one out with a 26-14 lead. Luther Head goes to the NBA along with Roger Powell. If Darren Williams comes back, this Illinois team does not miss a beat. They are going to be loaded again with D. Brown and Darren Williams in the background. McBride gets a chance, Brian Randall. They, they have some pretty good young players. Kiefer. Ware has done enough now to warrant a double team, maybe the first of his collegiate career. And the whistle before the lay-in by Kiefer, who had uh, stepped out. So still a 12-point Purdue deficit. When you look at the, the balance of this Illini attack, Head, Williams, and Brown, all three of those players will be first team all Big Ten. I don't know who's the MVP of this league. They're all great candidates. Jack Ingram in and out. Well, because there are three candidates, it may be that none of them win. And they split the vote. But any would be deserving. Offensive foul, Purdue's seventh turnover. This is on where? What oh, Illinois has done with his three-guard lineup rivals to this point of the season what anybody has done ever with a three-guard lineup. Yeah. And I'm going to throw this out again because I think it's so powerful. Gene Cady thinks that that trio of guards is the best that he's seen in his 25 years at Purdue. It's amazing. Luther Head with only two points. D. Brown with another three. He Williams, three trays apiece. 
And for D, that is 75. He may catch Luther before tonight's done. Luther, the league leader with 81 made three pointers this year. As Brandon McKnight slips inside, almost fumbled it away, but he gets his first two. Again, if you're thinking the way the coaches who will have to play Illinois will have to think, Brown, one more three. How do you guard them? Is man-to-man -man the best way if you think you're anywhere close to where they are athletically? No. Dave, in my opinion, D. Brown is the most valuable player in the Big Ten. When they played at Purdue, he made three big threes. At Michigan, three huge steals. He is their energizer. Another Purdue turnover. McKnight in too much traffic. Who's your MVP? Luther Head. Ingram fouled by Gary Ware. And that will be his second. I got to go with the trigger man, Darren Williams. It may be near the end for Gene Cady, but you'll never know it by watching him coaching every last second. Back at sold out Assembly Hall, Champaign, Illinois. Number one Illinois doubling up Purdue, Dave Barnett, Tim McCormick. You didn't have time to answer this before the timeout, but I'll put the question to you again. If you're going to coach against Illinois in the postseason, do you hope that you can stay with them athletically and, and try your luck man-to-man, -man, or do you sit back in the zone and just hope they have a bad shooting there? Yeah. Two things. I, I think that, that you do try to play zone against them, make it a low-possession game. Also, you attack them inside. I'm not overly impressed with their post-defense and post-scoring. They play three guards and two forwards. They don't have that big stud that's a guaranteed 8, 9, 10 rebounds. I think if you look at them, they only average six foot four and a half on, the, on their starting lineup. So if there's a big, strong team, I think you can hurt Illinois inside. Well, I hear you say that. I know a lot of people are nodding their heads. This is Jack Ingram looking for his first point. But part of what goes into a magical season like Illinois is having, Ingram off the bench, never counted on to score, and yet he had the biggest points in the game that they had to come from behind and win at Wisconsin. Nick Smith has made three three-pointers all year. He made the one to close off a win at Iowa. And Matt Kiefer, who's now made only nine three-pointers all year, launches that one, and it's 33-19. So when you look at a team that's had the season Illinois has had, always there are some unpredictable contributions, and the big men off the bench twice have helped pull out very tight games. D. Brown unstoppable. His fifth three-pointer. Five out of six beyond the arc for D. Brown of Maywood, Illinois. And McKnight short on the post up, shooting over Brown. Too tall for Augustine. One other thing to watch, Dave, is, is once we get into the Big Ten tournament, if you have to win three games in three days, you wonder if Illinois, who lacks some guard depth, is going to be tired when they face a Wisconsin or Michigan State team that really wants another shot at them. James Augustine gets in front of Kiefer for the steal. Ninth Purdue turnover. Ingram foul from behind on the reach by Teague. Eight of 13, Illinois beyond three. D. Brown, Darren Williams, and Luther Head are best friends. They spent the entire summer playing one-on-one -on -one with each other every single day. D. Brown was telling me that a lot of times at night they're sitting around watching TV, and, and at their apartment complex, they have a basketball court. Sometimes at midnight, 1 o'clock, they'll get into an argument about who's the best player, and the three of them will take it down out to the court, and they'll work on their game. It's been a, a labor of love for those three players, not only to prove their game, but to share that friendship. They argue among themselves about who's the best player, but when an outsider asks who's the best, D. Brown always says, well, my favorite point guard is Darren Williams. Even wears Darren Williams' stuff out in public. And, and Darren Williams will say, 
you know, similar things about D. Brown. So how can you put a value on that when your best players have literally no ego? And there's not an agenda of, I've got to do this, this, and this so I can go make my $100 million contract happen in the NBA. Yeah. None of that at any point has uh, filtered into the Illinois mindset at all this year. Yeah, it's great chemistry. And D has an Allen Iverson and a Michael Jordan, George Gervin, all those throwback jerseys. His favorite one is his college teammate. He wears Darren Williams to class. Chris Hartley. Former walk-on, getting a scholarship this year. Fumbles out of bounds. And now 10 Purdue turnovers, down 18. Andrew Ford in to replace Hartley. Illinois has had 13 wire-to-wire -wire victories out of their 28. Almost half, they have never trailed. They have never trailed in 24 of their 28 second halves. Think of that, four times ever have they found themselves behind in the second half this year. Plus 15 victory margin in the Big Ten. Dave, they've only had four games this entire season that they won by less than double digits. Nick Smith and Warren Carter off Bruce Weber's bench. Five on the shot clock. And Luther Head still not into the party with only two points. McKnight beating Smith into the corner. Right now, the only Boilermaker with the absence of the injured Landry, who has started every game in King Katie's final season. Carroll has come back in. Recovered from right foot surgery. Abscess costing him eight games. Keeper missed the tap. And Big Charles Davis gets fouled on his foul. Sunday, ABC has an NBA doubleheader. Coverage begins at 12.30 Eastern with the GMC NBA game time. And then at 1 Eastern, Dirk Nowitzki leads the Mavs against Yao Ming and the Rockets. At 3.30 Eastern, the world champion Pistons head to Sacramento to take on the Kings. Sunday on ABC, home of the NBA final. Pistons starting to look like NBA champions. Tayshaun Prince has been on fire since the break. And Charles Davis steps to the line. A very good basketball player, but his best work is on the football field, right, Dave? Starting tight end, all 12 games. 34 catches. That is a lot these days for a tight end. And uh, with his size alone, the NFL has got to take a hard look at him next year. He did not waste any time at all. December 31st, they played in the Sun Bowl in El Paso. January 1st, he joined the basketball team. Can he keep it going? Finally, a missed three by Brown, and Carter has it tipped out, out of bounds. Illinois by 16. The beat goes on. Scott Reese, Doug Gottlieb back in the studio. Coming up on the Century 21 Halftime Report, Rashad McCants not in the lineup again for North Carolina. We'll have an update on his condition. Big win for Louisville, sewing up at least a share of the Conference USA title. Doug, we'll talk more at halftime. We'll see you then. Back to Dave and Tim. And we're at the three-and-a-half-minute mark of this first half. The Illini leading by 16, 37-21. Andrew Ford sets up. David Teague, still with only two points, the leading remaining Boilermaker scorer, minus Carl Landry. Warren Carter setting up head, still looking no more, finally has his first three of the night and his 82nd of the year, tops in the Big Ten. Dave, uh, a hidden key for Illinois this year, one that you might not know. No one that I've seen this year does a better job with the ball reversal. Their spacing is incredible, and they all aren't afraid to share the ball. You're looking at uh, a guy who has uh, just about pulled off a miracle when you consider that in the 100-year history of the Big Ten, only Bruce Weber has won consecutive outright championships in his first two years. 
54 and 7, 26 and 1 here at home. So he took a very full cupboard that was left him by Bill Self when he took off for Kansas. But people forget, and it's only been a year and a half or so. I'm sure Bruce Weber's not going to forget how much convincing he had to do of the Illini fans. It's it's incredible to think about now, but there were there were a lot of skeptics who didn't think the change from the high-low Bill Self offense to the motion offense was going to work. And some of those skeptics are out there right now in these orange uniforms. He had to win over the players. They said once he won over this man, Darren Williams, he knew he had the rest of the team lined up ready to follow. And Williams draws the foul on the break. End to end. This team loves the speed game. There's no secrets. They get it and they go rim to rim, Dave. There's nobody faster in college basketball. And, and let me follow up on your point. When Bruce Weber took over, Darren Williams was the first to buy in. They were used to Bill Self, who recruited all of these players. He ran a high-low set offense. Bruce Weber loves the motion game. D. Brown and Luther Head were the last to buy in. But once they did, this offense has taken off and it's been unstoppable. He makes it simple for him. Keep moving. When you see somebody open, pass it. What can be more simple? Kiefer with the three, his second. And that one thrown in off the window, nonetheless. He had two threes his first two seasons combined, and he got two tonight and ten for the year. And Katie still can rage at the ref when he thinks he's right. Kiefer picks up number three. Now look at that picture. Look on either side of the screen. It's, I'm sure, well ingrained after 19 years of the side from Bruce Weber. Subconsciously, maybe. But even the body language is so much Gene Cade. Yeah, with the arms crossed. And I just, I, I think they have a really special relationship. There's so much respect. Bruce Weber was telling us that he spent 18 years at home growing up learning how to be a man from his dad. And then he went and spent 19 years with Gene Cady. And he says, he simply taught me everything about basketball and about life. One out of two. Smith on the board, though. Nick Smith, a five-year senior, who leaves here with four Big Ten titles. First player in the history of the program who can say that. Final minute 50 of the half. And Xavier Price. Matt Carroll. And Charles Davis is turned away inside. As wide as Davis is, he can't deal with the 7-2 Smith. Sixth three-pointer by D. Brown. That matches the most threes by any Illinois player in any game this year. And it also gives him a season-high 21 points. And we are a minute 15 from halftime. Williams picks that one up off the deck. Price tried to foul and couldn't. And Carter gets the finish. Seventeen thousand on their feet in monochromatic unison. Almost every single one of them wearing the orange tonight. As Purdue up against the shot clock, and with one second on the clock, Davis is fouled by Carter. You know, don't be fooled by the highlights in transition. Illinois is not a tuxedo team. They're all blue collar. Their break starts on defense, and they have sprinters on the wing. Darren Williams, absolutely a master at running the break. What a delivery. 
Charles Davis. All three of his points from the line. As Ingram and Augustine in for Smith and Carter. I heard a comment from a critic of Illinois that well, Bruce you mean Weber. There still are critics of Illinois. Here's what he said: that while well, he's winning with Bill Self's players, yeah, I think that's ridiculous because if that's true, Bill Self is winning with Roy Williams' players, and Roy Williams is winning with Matt Doherty's players. Well, now, it is all true. It's true in all three instances, but that's what they've been hired to do. Yeah, and look at. Bruce Weber coached at Southern Illinois. That means that Chris Lowry is winning their fourth straight title with whose players? Bruce Weber's. And uh, Matt Painter won with Bruce's players last year. I mean, they coach who they have to coach. As Luther Head has his three pointer knocked out with 1.1 left. That's a ridiculous criticism. Yeah. You are really hunting if that's the best you can come oh, up yeah. against for Bruce Weber. I got a good laugh at that one. And I think that Bruce Weber deserves a lot more credit than he has been given. Incredibly solid both on and off the court. You, know, you can see how good they are here. The thing I like the most is how they've handled the prosperity. They come to work after really big wins. And that, that always doesn't happen with really good teams. Uh-oh. That one heads into the photographers. Air mailed with 1.1, of course, still on the clock, meaning the Illini will have a chance under their own basket to add to this 21-point lead. Williams in, Brown for another three, and could you end the half any better? better half than D. Brown. Seven three-pointers, 24 points. Yeah, and I'm going to say it again. D. Brown is the most valuable player this year in the Big Ten. With a half second to spare, his seventh three-pointer. And we're just at halftime, 50 to 26 for undefeated number one Illinois as we rejoin Scott Reese and Doug Gottlieb in the Century 21 halftime report studio. All right, Dave, the Illini charging toward 29 and 0 coming up on the Century 21 halftime report. Yeah, D. Brown, a pretty good first half. J.J. Redick, a pretty good night for Duke and Daniel Ewing as well on senior day. ACC highlights on the flip side. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the all-new Odyssey from Honda. A great idea made better. Welcome to the Century 21 Halftime Report. Big first half for D. Brown. Seven three-point buckets, 24 points, and yes, it would be Illinois 50, Purdue 46, D. Brown 24 as the Illini chase 29 and 0. It is the Century 21 Halftime Report. Scott Reese alongside Doug Gottlieb. We'll have scores and highlights momentarily. Doug will chime in as well, but first some news out of the ACC. Rashad McCants missing his third game tonight with that stomach disorder, and he is questionable for Sunday's regular season finale against Duke. Carolina currently a half game up on Wake Forest for first place in the ACC. However, that would be tenuous if Florida State had its way tonight. The Seminoles came to play. There's McCants, who did not come to play. Ray Felton spinning, throwing it up and hitting. However, it's still a three-point game. Other end, Adam Wallaskowski for three. Big fella stepping out. He had 13 in the first half. Back and forth we go. How about Sean May running the floor? Throwing it down, nine points for May in the first half, but Andrew Wilson for three, and the Knowles, Doug, up three in Chapel Hill. And this is the kind of game, remember, Carolina still has Duke to play at home. We're just penciling in, them in as a one seed. You cannot lose at home to Florida State if you want to maintain that one seed that almost every analyst has already given them. Seminole shoot 60% from the floor in the first half, eight of 14 from three-point country. Miami and Duke, Daniel Ewing taking in the applause and oohs and ahs on senior night. J.J. Redick, how about some oohs and ahs for that, huh? 
It's 16-4, and the Dukies pour it on. Reddick again from somewhere near Greensboro. He had six triples, 29 points. Here he actually misses one. Sheldon Williams has got his back. Two more of his 14 points. And then Lee Melchione, everybody shooting it well for the Dukies tonight. Well, I mean, how big is the pickup of Lee Melchione? Remember, he came in as a walk-on back when they had the 5-8 and eight rule. And think of how valuable he has been to the Dukies this year. Big win for Duke, 83-59. Coach Krzyzewski now 6-0 all-time against Miami. This is the ninth straight season for Duke with at least 11 ACC wins. And, uh, boy, we got a jumbled mess in the middle of this conference, don't we? Yeah, boy, Miami, that is not the way to play on national TV when you're trying to earn an at-large bid. Conference USA, Charlotte, Louisville, top two teams. Larry O'Bannon on senior day had a very, very big night. 26 in the first half. That ties the school record. A career-high 33 in the game. And the Cardinals poured on Taekwon Dean playing through mono, but you wouldn't know it tonight, Doug. Yeah, I mean, look, if Shavik Randolph was regarding him in the NCAA tournament, wouldn't it be mono -y mono Yeah. Okay. Dean with 27 points on the day. Another triple from the corner. Well, you got more than that? You got no, a follow-up? I, I guess the question is... <laughs> O'Bannon has 26 at half. D. Brown has 24 at half. Huh? Who had the better first half? I, I guess the guy with 26. I I'm no math major, but that's probably the way I would go. Cardinals 18 and 1 this season when making more than seven three pointers in a game, and they clinch at least a share of the Conference USA title. Now, Doug Gottlieb never wanted to shy away from controversy or avoid stirring up a little controversy. So take us back to Tuesday night, Indiana and Wisconsin. Well, as we take you back to Tuesday night, Indiana, Wisconsin, it's obvious that. There may not be a, a real clear cut, a clear cut uh, bad call made on this particular play. But if you watch it, there is the appearance that maybe there's a conflict of interest. You know, Indiana trailed by one, and it looked like Wilkinson fouls on the play. Mike Wilkinson fouls on the play. Mike Davis obviously went nuts, but Rick Hartzell was the official who was in position. And that conflict of interest, or at least the appearance, of the conflict of interest is apparent because Rick Hartzell is the athletic director at Northern, uh, Northern Iowa. Now, if he's the AD for a bubble team, why is he officiating a game involving another bubble team in a game that could cost Mike Davis his job and could definitely cost Indiana a chance at playing the NCAA tournament? I'm not saying there's a clear-cut conflict of interest, but there's at least that appearance, and it lends the question, why is Rich Falk assigning him to a game in the Big Ten? He's the conference uh, officials commissioner, and why is he assigning him to this game, and why wasn't a switch made at the last second so that there's never that appearance when it was obviously, at least to, to Steve Lavin, who was calling the game as the color man for ESPN, he said it was a bad call. I agree. It was a totally blown missed call, but now there's the appearance of the conflict of interest because there's no call made and because he's the AD at Northern Iowa. And you're sitting at home saying, Northern Iowa on the bubble? Perhaps. A game behind uh, Wichita State right now for second in that MVC. Thursday throwdowns, it's an ESPN tradition, and we've got our share of high-flying jams coming up on the Halftime Report. This Halftime Report is brought to you by Century 21. Visit your local Century 21 office. Real estate for your world. This is the Century 21 Halftime Report. If you've watched college basketball at all this season on Thursday nights, you know we are all about the dunkage. So tonight, for you, the viewer, the best of the best from a year's worth of Throwdown Thursday, the jams of the season.
All right, so there are your five candidates, Warwick, Muhammad, Adams, Gray, and Carney, and almost 60,000 votes on ESPN.com. Hakeem Warwick is your winner. Doug, your thoughts? Uh, Ismail Muhammad jumps over a guy in a game and doesn't win? I think it's a season-long achievement award. I guess the, the body of work. He jumped over a guy <laughs> in a game. Uh, D. Brown's not jumping over guys. He is shooting over guys with reckless abandon. Seven triples in the first half, 24 points. Illinois getting it done against Purdue. Second half coming right up. This halftime report is brought to you by Century 21. Visit your local Century 21 office. Real estate for your world. Well, the idea is that Bruce Weber is grilling another Illinois opponent. Boy, are they ever. 50 to 26. Seven three-pointers in the first half by D. Brown. That is an assembly hall record. It's one off the school record for three-pointers in a game. And you start the subject uh, of what Illinois did to him, and you have to start with that 24 points that Dean Brown put up there. Yeah, an incredible display of long-range shooting by Illinois. Get this, Purdue scores 26 points. Illinois had 33 on three-pointers alone. They shot 57%. Long range, this gets you dizzy. D. Brown from deep, he had 24 from the corner. As good a shooting as you're gonna find. And this is what has powered Illinois all year long. Now, if you're, you're looking for an impressive number for Purdue, uh, at least they outscored D. Brown 26 to 24. Well, and then there's rebounding. Of course, there were more <laughs> rebounds to go around. Look at that at number. Their end, because they right shot 38 there. and a half percent. 19 points off of turnovers. Brandon McKnight, the point guard, told me before the game, if we have more than seven turnovers in the first half, we'll get blown out. They had 12. In the first meeting, as David T. scores his second basket of the night, in the first meeting at Mackey, D. Brown was scoreless in that first half. He scored 14 in the second half. And so if you put that half and this first half together, that's a 38 point, 40 point stretch for Brown. Luth ahead trying to force it inside for Augustine. Into the corner, and it'll go the other way. Purdue, the only team all season to get as much as a nine point lead on Illinois back on January 8th. The Illini recovered and won it by nine. 68-59, but again, they're the only team to beat Bruce Weber here in two years. That coming January a year ago. And playing without their best player for the rest of their season, Carl Landry with a torn ACL Saturday in the loss to Minnesota. And, and Dave, when you lose Landry, it's like losing a player and a half he provided toughness and rebounding on defense. Offensively, he was their only consistent low post score, and he created space for their perimeter guys. And he led the Big Ten in free throws made and attempted. And without him, only Charles Davis off the bench has gotten to the free throw line. Darren Williams with 15 now. And his fourth three. This is as simple as I can put it. When Illinois shoots like this, they're unbeatable. I don't care about Wake Forest and North Carolina and Kansas. Illinois is unbeatable when they shoot the ball like this. He kicked it last. Maybe this call, although really the clock stopped on who or should have on who kicked it first. The one for each team did. It's going to be Purdue inbounding Brandon McKnight. That Kiefer with 10 points, their leading score, including a couple of rare three-pointers. And held off by Augustine. Luther Head showed his unselfishness. Five points, but five assists in the first half. Not looking all that much for his own shot because he knew how hot his teammates Williams and Brown were. That's just how it works for this Illinois team. And, and another offensive rebound. Augustine and Powell are the heartbreakers. 
Purdue does a pretty nice job. They force a missed shot, and it just rips their heart and their soul out when they go ahead and they get an offensive rebound and get another opportunity. David Teague staggering just as far as he can get before having to uh, be helped the rest of the way toward the bench. He stopped about 20 feet away. He couldn't make it as far as the Purdue bench. And just one more thing that's colored this final season for Gene Cady. They have uh, not had the kind of roster that can afford a lot of injuries, but they've had them anyway. And they finally lose in the last worst blow their best player, Landry. Augustine will go for a three point play. 6'10 junior expected to redshirt his freshman year. He was too good to sit, and he's gotten better every year. Really impressive young player and athlete. Will play in the NBA someday. Good shot blocker. As you see the left, I always think it's a big advantage for a kid like Augustine to be a left-handed shot blocker. Bill Russell, David Robinson, when you're left-handed, your left hand with block shots is right on the right-handed shooter's shooting hand. This by McKnight is knocked all the way out to Chris Hartley. And now Brandon open for a three-pointer from the corner. And the Boilermakers still down 56-31. Roger Powell, call for steps. This yep. Illinois team putting together back-to-back outright Big Ten titles their first since 1951 and 52 the last Big Ten team to repeat actually did a three-peat and that was Katie's mid 90s Purdue crew 94 95 and 96 look at the defensive pressure by Illinois it's an all-out blitz every possession because they know that Purdue lacks the playmakers you can see it Gary Ware and uh, Luther Head now injured as he staggers off the contact with Hartley. That'll be just his first. You know, the problems were predictable for Gene Cady this year. If you, if you look at the roster, they lost seven players last year. They lost their top scorer and rebounder. They lost their best assist guy. Had a couple of injuries. You cannot have that kind of a, a defection and, and an injury problem and can be able to expect to compete at this level. Luther Head now. Shaken up just briefly. We, by the way, are going to have a chat with the new Illinois football coach. Momentarily, Ron Zook. As Gene has a little fun, look like with the footwear of <laughs> Andrew Ford. Senior, second generation Boilermaker. From West Lafayette. His mid 90s teams, a high point in the 25 years for Katie leading the Boilermakers. And you're looking at the high point for the Illini program is McKnight now back to back three pointers. Four titles in the last five years, 24 straight Big Ten wins in the regular season, the third longest streak any Big Ten team has ever put together. And they finish up Sunday at Ohio State, a team they beat by 19 here. And if they are able to finish that, they would be 30 and 0. And that would be the greatest regular season in Big Ten history. Rich McBride, call for the Illinois foul. It's a lot harder, obviously, just look at how long it's been since the last undefeated season, 29 years. One reason it's harder to run an entire table is you have to win so many more games than, say, the John Wooden UCLA team. They were 30-0 with national championships back in the 60s, early 70s. 30 wins was all they had to play. Not that it takes anything away from those accomplishments, but Illinois, as Powell gets hammered, Illinois will be at 30-0 before they even get to the Big Ten tournament. And if you put it in marathon terms, they're three-quarters of the way through 
their season. They still have the equivalent of about six and a half miles left of a marathon. And we'll be joined by football coach Ron Zook when we come back. Scott Reese in the studio, North Carolina, looking to sew up a share of the ACC regular season title, but nobody told the Seminoles of Florida State. Jason Rich, rise and fire. That tied it up right now. The Knowles up by two. Dave and Tim. Well, the Illini up by 22 here with 15.40 to go, and we are joined by the new head coach of Illinois football, Ron Zook. My first question to you was a silly one. I knew. I said, well, you're all settled in, right? You got your house uh, moved in. All the boxes are on uh, no, no, you're still living in a hotel. I'm actually. in a hotel, actually. And, uh, but no, we got a lot of work to do and haven't had time to even haven't had time to even think about getting uh, getting settled in. Well, you're uh, you're known and you have been known as a great recruiter. How did your first recruiting uh, session here go? I'm excited about it. I really am. I mean, obviously, uh, it, it takes time to, to see what they can do. But uh, I, I really feel like this is uh, an opportunity that uh, these guys come in there. have guys are going to have the opportunity to play young and play uh, play early. And uh, so it's, you know, it's, I think it really, worked, really, really went well for us. Ron, you spent time in the SEC. How familiar are you with the Big Ten? Your thoughts on Michigan, Ohio State, and the competition here? Well, two years, uh, my first two years at Florida, we, you know, we played uh, Michigan, we played uh, Iowa in, in, the, in the bowl game. And I tell you what, you know, I, I'm, being, I'm from the Big Ten, from Ohio area, and, and, and so I understand that this conference and how, how good it really is. What do you think of this environment here? Every, everybody has orange on, and I see you've got your orange shirt, it's too. It's a special place. It really is. we got to try to get uh, the same uh, environment across the street. Well, it hasn't been that long, just a couple of years, really, since Illinois football was on top and uh, went all the way to the Sugar Bowl. Yeah, 2001. You, on, you, you get this question. I'm sure this is the, the classic new coach question. How far do you think you are from having a competitive team here? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, once again, we got to get out and, and practice, and, and, and I think it'll be we'll have a better uh, uh, idea where we're really at uh, at the end of spring football. But uh, obviously, we got a lot of work to do. But the attitude has been super. Uh, I mean, we're looking forward to getting going. Well, we wish you uh, the best of luck, and we'll uh, enjoy watching as you take uh, the reins this coming fall. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You bet. It. Thanks a lot. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Ron Zook, incoming. Head football coach of the Illini. Roger Powell picking up his third foul a moment ago. And uh, David Teague is okay after staggering off the court a couple of minutes ago. He's back in. And a deep corner three pointer missed by Ford. Davis there to foil the fast break before Luther Head could get it started. Ford missing another three and the rebound foul. This could be Teague or Davis. It's going to be Teague with his third. Yeah. This environment is absolutely incredible. Gene Cady was telling me that, that he thinks that Illinois feeds off the energy of this crowd better than any other team in the Big Ten. And, and I think up near the top there, Dave, I see a guy that's not wearing orange. We, we need to get him out of here. He's going to have his season tickets pulled. That was one of the first things Bruce Weber did when he took over. He wanted to emphasize orange as the primary color. And uh, they have taken that about as far as you can. This is 16,618. And seriously, 16,600 at least are following his wishes. And it, it's the students, it's the orange crush, and it's all the way up to the very top row of Assembly Hall. Roger Powell at the line. And so it just adds to the effect if you're a visiting player walking in to what looks like uh, the most intimidating place imaginable when it's already as noisy as it is. And then you look and you see this kind of uh, visual unity. Is there any place anywhere near this when you play in the Big Ten? No, the, I, I would say that, that Indiana was close, but a lot of it was their teams were so good. I know Michigan State, when they get their white out in the Breslin, is, is also an intimidating place. But this is the best in the Big Ten right now, and a lot of it's the team. Teague with the miss, head with the board. Breslin Center is not quite as big as the Assembly Hall here in Champaign. Noise-wise, I think they compare, but I don't think I've ever seen an all-green or all-white Breslin Center crowd the way this one is always all orange. 
This motion game is, is going to be so hard to stop in the NCAA. It's a five-man motion. And the reason I like it so much at this time of year, sets are really easy to scout. You know, the coaches are yelling them out during the game. These are all tendencies, and I think they're going to be very hard to cover. Ingram misfiring, and Davis there for the board. You made a real good comment about how unselfish this team is, Dave. I, I couldn't agree with you more. They have so many weapons, but it, it is unusual to not to, to find a team that, that is so good but is not afraid to share the ball. Equal parts, talent and lack of ego. Davis, a little bit awkward maybe, but oh, almost in the miss, his first field goal. And six point. And it doesn't take long for Darren Williams to answer. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea to not celebrate your score for very long against the Illini. Michigan State and Illinois push it after baskets. Makes and misses better than anybody else in the Big Ten among the best in the nation. Aaron Williams, 17 points. D. Brown still at 24. He's letting everybody else get the shots this half. He had 24 7 threes first half. That something else that is falling right in Illinois' lap. The three places they would have to go to win the national title Chicago twice, the regionals, as well as uh, the Big Ten tournament. And then the final four, of course in St. Louis, so you're not looking at more than a three-hour drive anywhere Illinois has to go en route to the national title. Yep, bus trips and their fans will be in full effect wherever they play. Well, my question as you look at their resume is, how in the world are they still only number two in RPI? Doesn't that uh, present a convincing argument against whatever their system is if, if you can put a team that has any losses over a team that has yet to lose this deep into the season. Yeah, RPI does not matter in this case. They're number one overall. David, in 237 hours, basketball fans are going to have that bracket in hand. And I can tell you right now, the Illini are the number one overall seed. Well, Illinois has been uh, a sure thing for the tournament. Teague missing another three. And so has Michigan State. So has Wisconsin. Luther Head will go for a three-point play. And I think we agree that Minnesota should also now be a sure thing with 20 wins with 10 conference wins. Yeah, the cloud has been lifted when you have 20 wins and 10 in the Big Ten. Dave, you did your research, and you said that if you win double digits in this conference, you are going. Well, the last 20 years, every eligible Big Ten team that won 10 conference games got a bid. The underline there is for eligible. There were uh, teams like Michigan two years ago and Illinois in 91 that were on probation and were ineligible. But in Minnesota's case, they have that history behind them. For two decades, teams out of this league that have done what they've done this year have all been rewarded with NCAA bid. Yep. Dan Munson has done a super job this year. Maybe they're lacking some of the marquee non-conference, but he had his team grow early in the season, and it all started at a key matchup at Nebraska. Nick Smith misses the step back jumper. So the Big Ten will have four. Illinois, Michigan State, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Indiana, Iowa still have a good deal of work to do. Now, Indiana can look at that same history, and if they win their last game, there's no question, figure that they should also have proved their case for the NCAA bid. We're about to come up on a chance to look at the, their resume and Iowa, a team that you wouldn't think would have a prayer, but there's just a little sliver of history that might help them out as Williams gets the benefit of the feed to him this time from Nick Smith. Was that Nick Smith or Bill Walton delivering the ball <laughs> in the low post? My goodness. 19 
for Williams. Still 24 for D. Brown and Luther Head with eight and five assists. College basketball's best three-headed backcourt. Deadly from the start tonight in this home finale for the undefeated, unanimous number one team in the country. Now, I said D. Brown's Big Ten MVP. You like Darren Williams, is that correct? I like Darren Williams for MVP. Runs the show. I mean, you could say that they're all, in a sense, point guards, because you're going to see D. Brown handle the ball a lot. He's third in the Big Ten in the six. Luther Head, sixth in the Big Ten in the six. But Darren Williams is about to lead the league for his third straight year and can hit 20-plus points if that's needed and can get you five, six, seven rebounds. Ingram, nice reverse. And I think maybe also give him the extra nod because as we were talking about the first half, he was really the first to get on board last year with the Bruce Weber system, the first to see the benefits of the motion offense. As he and McKnight slide into the front court, and Williams gonna have to be helped up. But hopefully okay. Bill Russell Jr. hitting him a moment ago. Time Proper respect being paid to the five outgoing Illinois seniors in their final Assembly Hall appearance, including Roger Powell, Nick Smith, that's Bill Walton Jr. Who said Russell? <laughs> Somebody on our truck said Bill Russell Jr. When did he ever pass? Jack Ingram. Out of San Antonio, transferred from Tulsa, where he was recruited by Bill Self. Followed him here, ends up finishing his career under Bruce Weber. And Luther Head from Chicago. And then there's Fred in Kemde, who has yet to see any action on the floor, but I bet he sees some pretty quickly. Their lone walk-on this year. Aaron Williams at 20 points now. Big power guard. Says his favorite player is Jason Kidd of New Jersey. He reminds me more of Denver's Andre Miller. Knows how to run a team real well, and, and, and he could score a lot more points, but as you mentioned, his value is running the team. A sparkling six assist, zero turnover night. Scoring a lot of points, playing some defense too. Six more assists tonight. He is five away from Bruce Douglas's Illinois single season record of 200. Set at 84-85. And uh, with a year to go, second career assist. Adam Liddell in, stepped on the sideline. Now here's the case Iowa can make. Those are some pretty impressive key wins. Louisville, Texas back when they were full strength. Texas Tech, Iowa State, all three of whom uh, have done some Big 12 damage. And then also, as Brown hits his eighth three-pointer of the day, which ties the school record. Eight threes. Kevin Turner at UCLA, December 30 of 97. The first eight three-point game for the Illini and the first points of the second half for D. Brown tie that record. Look out, James Augustine. Uh, Illinois relies heavily on two or three major scoring spurts per game, and it's usually off the defensive end. 14-0 run, punctuated by a flying James Augustine slammer. Scott Reese with a Sports Center in-game update. North Carolina starting to pull away from Florida State and the fabulous freshman Marvin Williams. Nice look there from Ray Felton. Carolina leads it by nine, six to play, guys. Well, and the team on the heels of Illinois having a much tougher time of it. Illinois with a 16-0 run. Purdue working on four and a half minutes since they last scored, and this three-pointer missed by Adam Liddell, redshirt freshman. Yeah, and Bruce Weber takes no satisfaction in doubling up the score on his mentor, but his team is so incredibly focused. It's senior night. These guys want to cut down a Big Ten championship net after this game. Well, he's got Rich McBride, Jack Ingram, 
And Warren Carter in all off the bench and only Powell and Head remain from the starting group. D. Brown after that uh, school record tying eight three pointer also his career high game now 27 points. Previous best was his freshman year 25. David Teague injured earlier tonight and didn't sit long. And the futility continues for the Boilers. Now well over five minutes since their last point. Luther Head. Nifty job getting free in the lane, but Liddell was there to make it a one-shot possession. Gene Cady's legacy in his 25 years in West Lafayette is going to be the Rottweiler defense that they played, really mean, aggressive, and attacking. But when you look at their personnel, they really lack the athletes to get after people, especially on the perimeter. I think another legacy was articulated really well by Jay Price, who is now an assistant to Weber here, but like Weber, longtime assistant to Katie at Purdue there from 94 to 2003. And he said before the game what he most remembers about his years with Katie is the fact that he never gave up, not just on a game, but he never gave up on a player. Even if the player had given up on himself, even if all the fans, everybody else in the program had given up on that player, Gene Katie never would. As long as he had anybody showing up to play, he always figured he could help them get better. And in almost every case, he was able to do that. He's 25 years running the program. Luther Head will go for another three-point play. Brown again at a career high 27. Eight threes tying the school record of Kevin Turner on a member. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Mr. Goodrich, found at all GM dealerships nationwide, and Las Vegas, the town where nobody knows your game plan, only Vegas. The best at their best tonight, leading by 40 with an 18 0 run. The last Purdue points. Seven minutes ago, they missed their last 12 shots. Now back to Iowa. You would think with a six and nine record and with their best player long gone at this point, Pierre Pierce, that Iowa would really have no hope at all. What they can fall back on is just a little bit of history. First of all, they are the only team that has won four games in four days to win a Big Ten tournament. And that was early in Steve Walford's tenure there. Also, there was a team back in 1999 that was also below 500 in Big Ten play that got an at-large NCAA bid. It was Purdue when they were 7-9. The next year, of course, they got stopped one spot shy of the Final Four. So if Iowa has the magic in them that they had a few years ago, that's doubtful, of course, missing their best player. But that's what the conference tournaments are all about. It's about hope and wiping bad memories out and getting fresh starts. Rich McBride with a three. Rich the NCAA selection committee will not look favorably upon the fact that Pierre Pierce is gone and their key victories in Maui were powered by his play. And to the bench goes Luther Head for the last time he's a senior. He leaves with 11 points. And the scoreless stretch continues for Purdue now. Well, ESPNU is here about to debut tomorrow with a simulcast here on ESPN2. 7 Eastern, a special two-hour college game day live from Oklahoma State. So be there from the beginning for ESPNU. And then you and I get to be there for history. Yeah, Eastern Kentucky and Southeast Missouri State will be doing that game. And Kind of an interesting thing. There's five guys coming in for Purdue. There's no players on Purdue's bench. The Indiana tournament resume now. Nine and six in the conference. And they uh, finish up Saturday against Northwestern. So they will be favored to be 10 and six going into the Big Ten tournament. They can fall back on that same 20 year history. Every eligible Big Ten 10 win team has gotten an NCAA bid. Yeah, and the advantage for the Hoosiers is they played a killer schedule. Roger Powell, the Reverend, goes out. 
Indiana played North Carolina, Connecticut, Notre Dame, Kentucky, and they had that buzzer loss, which was disputed against Charlotte. They played the big boys. And if I'm on the, the selection committee, I have to consider that Charlotte game, in Indiana's case, as a win. Because if it were officiated correctly, if the officials had been given the shot that they really needed, which showed that the clock had run out on Charlotte and the last shot should not have counted. If I'm on the selection committee, Indiana did everything they needed to do to get that win and how big a win that is now against Charlotte the way their season is Yeah, and, and last 10 games, they're finishing very strong. That's taking nothing away from Charlotte. They got the win. It was nothing they could control, but that's simply an officiating mistake that went in their favor. Purdue stuck on 36 points, and finally, at the oh, shot Davis. clock buzzer, Charles Davis hits, and they had gone not since a 13-28, eight and a half minutes without a single point. Bench just about clear now. Sean Pruitt, 6'8 freshman from Aurora, Illinois. And Fred Inkemde, the fifth outgoing senior. And the lone walk-on for the Illini also in. Bruce Weber knew that this team was special. And it wasn't necessarily from the pounding they gave preseason number one Wake Forest. It was after that game when they came back and they beat a very good Arkansas and then Georgetown team. Especially on the road, he said they're focused and he knew that they had some special things in store this season. Purdue shooting 28% from the field. 15 out of 54. Four of 17 threes. Illinois 56 and a half percent. 54% threes. And with 3.59 remaining in the home season here at Assembly Hall for the five seniors who are about to go 29 and 0. Getting geared up for championship week. Opening round of the Northeast Conference, the top seed Monmouth in some trouble, but Marcus Alston with a layup with 1.4 on the clock. Central Connecticut State with one last chance at the buzzer. No, sir, and the Hawks survive and advance. Dave and Tim, as we know, that's what it's all about. Well, the madness has begun here, Illinois by 43. Gene Cady has always been the disarmingly honest, even about himself, and what he has said to sum up this last year. We're about to go 7-19 and 19 on this year. He says, I don't think the kids cope too well with coaches like me anymore. I'm too demanding. It feels like we're cowboys always going down into a canyon to be ambushed. I'm getting out at the right time. <laughs> A funny guy. I like his comment where he said, yeah, I, I, I'm seven wins this year. I have not been very impressive, 18 losses. But even Rembrandt had a few bad paintings. They're only worth like five million, <laughs> not 25 million. 14 points, all Illinois has allowed Purdue in the second half, as in Kemdi is a uh, turned away and when you're the last man off the bench for a team that's doing what Illinois is doing this year even the Chicago Sun Times is going to cover you three pointer maybe your prices for his point nice story in the Sun Times yesterday about Fred and Kemdy getting a degree in political science and headed toward uh, law school it says not too many could say they walked on for a number one team in the nation and walking off the court for the last time here at home one of the seniors, Jack Ingram from San Antonio. He will get his electrical engineering degree in a couple of months. Nick Smith, who's getting his master's in finance, throws in a three. Fourth three-pointer of the year. Is there anybody on this Illini team that doesn't nail three-pointers? Nick Smith, last year, two key threes in the overtime win over Purdue. As Gary Ware now Gary with Ware. his best game. Junior transfer with 12 points. 
after his previous best in their last game. Ten against Minnesota after Carl Landry had gone out. And Kennedy is tied up. Gene Cady leaving after 25 years at Purdue talking about advice for young coaches. Enjoy uh, your day-to-day -day experiences with your players. Uh, get good people around you. Have administration that understands the coaching game. Understands that... Uh, Scheduling has a lot to do with winning and losing, understanding that injuries have a lot to do with winning and losing, and, uh, you know, kind of just give you a free reign and say, hey, you coach, and uh, you will take care of all the administrative stuff, and it will be okay. Well, there's, there's a key also to how he has survived as long as he is. He understands how much goes into winning and how easy it is to get off track as a program. Uh, he also told Matt Painter that he recommends going out and recruiting some really tall, quick athletes. That will help. That's great advice. Price. Xavier throws in back-to-back -back threes. And Katie wants a time. 84-48. Moments ago, Nick Smith got his uh, final round of applause. After hitting a three-pointer Saturday. Two great games on ESPN beginning at noon Eastern. Number nine, Louisville, with a chance to clinch Conference USA outright. They take on DePaul. And then at nine Eastern, Oklahoma State against Texas. And a Texas team that badly needs, in most eyes, to get one more impressive win on their resume, missing two fifths of their starters. That one also available in high definition ESPN HD. How far above the pack in terms of tenure in the Big Ten was Gene Cady. Well, you have to go 15 years ago or 15 years down and find uh, Tom Izzo in his 10th year. And then it's another precipitous drop. Steve Alford and Monson both in their sixth year. So no one really even in the same zip code in Big Ten tenure as the man who was leaving Purdue. Okay, to put that graphic in perspective, when Gene Cady took over. Oh, they hate this. Fred almost had a chance to score. And it's wiped out for traveling. Oh. When Gene Cady took over at Purdue, Thad Mata, the head coach at Ohio State, was only a freshman in high school. A career before he got to Purdue. He had success at Western Kentucky. Assistant before that at Arkansas. Steal, reverse, no finish by Brandon McKnight. And uh, it said before the game he has not decided where he and his wife Pat are going to head. They're going to get their house in West Lafayette for sale. And he just says he knows that it would be someplace warm and very likely on or near a golf course. <laughs> but, but where that may be, still up in the air. At Kiefer. And Davis gets the follow. You know, I, I want to pay a, a real quick tribute to Gene Cady. I played in the Big Ten against him, and he was the most intimidating guy, and that includes Bobby Knight. John Chaney at Temple, Dean Smith at North Carolina. Gene Cady is, is one of the greats of all time. It's been an honor to, to have a chance to broadcast his games. Class from start to finish. A lot like this Illinois team, which is now 29 and 0. Another step toward perfection. With the best start in college basketball in the last 14 years. 84-50 is our final. So for Tim McCormick and our entire ESPN crew, this has been a presentation of ESPN the entire the worldwide leader in sports for the entire story. You can log on to ESPN.com. Dave Barnett, so long from Champaign, Illinois. Let's go now to Reese Davis, Doug Gottlieb, and Andy Katz at College Game.